Prime Minister, uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome you uh, to uh, NATO uh, headquarters uh, just uh, one week after uh, taking office. Um, I congratulate you uh, on your appointment uh, as uh, Prime Minister and the fact that you decided uh, to, to visit uh, NATO so soon after you took office is a clear demonstration uh, of your commitment uh, to, to NATO. Uh, it's now uh, 10 years uh, since Estonia joined uh, our uh, alliance. Uh, throughout, uh, Estonia has made NATO stronger, and NATO has made Estonia stronger. Over the years, uh, brave and professional Estonian troops have made a substantial contribution to our uh, challenging uh, mission uh, in, uh, in Afghanistan. Um, Estonia has learned tough lessons uh, on cyber defense and uh, is now making a significant contribution to strengthen the alliance efforts in this vital uh, domain. And uh, you are leading by example uh, when it comes to investing the right amount of resources in the right defense capabilities. Uh, despite the economic crisis, uh, you are spending 2% uh, of your gross domestic product uh, on defense. This shows your commitment to collective defense. And it shows um, that if Estonia can do it, other allies can too. Um, we discussed the implications of Russia's aggression uh, against Ukraine, and um, as we face the most serious uh, security crisis in generation, we are determined uh, to keep NATO re robust, ready, and agile. Estonia, like every NATO member, can count on allied solidarity at all times. We have more than doubled uh, the number of fighter aircraft allocated to our air policing mission in the Baltic states, uh, thanks to the United States. Many European allies have also offered additional planes, air-to-air -air refueling tankers, and other capabilities. And uh, we will make sure that we have updated military plans, enhanced exercises, and appropriate deployments. As we prepare for our NATO summit in Wales uh, this September, uh, we will continue to take all the necessary steps to safeguard the security and the freedom of our allies from the Baltic to the Black Sea and to maintain the vital bond uh, between uh, Europe uh, and uh, North America. A bond which is the foundation of our alliance. This is the task ahead. And Prime Minister, I know that I can continue to count on your support. Prime Minister. Yes, you can, Secretary General. I thank you and I can uh, fully subscribe to what uh, Secretary General just said. It was a fruitful discussion indeed, and it's not a coincidence that my first trip as a Prime Minister is uh, to come here and meet Secretary General Rasmussen. Uh, the overall um, security situation in, um, in our region, but not only in our region, in, in Europe as a whole, uh, has changed and the times are challenging uh, indeed. Uh, of course, uh, it's important to enhance our assistance uh, to Ukraine, both through NATO, other in international organizations, and individually, all, all member states. And um, Estonia, of course, is very much uh, committed to the sovereignty and territorial uh, integrity of Ukraine and will continue to offer bilateral political and uh, practical support. We also, of course, uh, spoke about uh, Russia. Uh, Russia's illegal annexation of uh, part of Ukraine has um, gravely violated international law. 
and the principles of international relations, uh, including uh, within uh, NATO-Russia uh, Council. Uh, the only way forward in this situation is to review entire range of NATO-Russia relations and to put them on a new standing. As uh, Russia's intentions remain, um, remain unpredictable, uh, so more importantly, we discussed um, the short-term measures uh, for reassurance and the need for sustainable uh, uh, deterrence uh, measures. Uh, let me use uh, this uh, opportunity also to thank the Allies uh, who have demonstrated the solidarity by providing additional planes uh, to Baltic uh, air policing. This is uh, really very important. And Estonia has offered Amari Air Base as a second location uh, for NATO air policing mission, and we, have, we are glad uh, that this offer has been um, accepted by uh, the Allies uh, yesterday at the, at the meeting also. Uh, Estonia is willing to contribute uh, other means to strengthen the Alliance. Uh, for instance, uh, our offer to host uh, NATO's uh, uh, cyber range uh, for training and exercise uh, need. Uh, we will meet soon, of course, in, also in Tallinn, but also in, in uh, Wales Summit, and have to make a decision to implement sustainable measures uh, for deterrence and collective defence, uh, from prudent planning and exercises to brutes on the ground. Such decisions uh, would reaffirm the collective defence as the cornerstone of NATO and stress cohesion, solidarity and, and resolve between the Allies. I am confident that the Alliance uh, will live up to its uh, task. Secretary General, I thank you once more uh, for the chance uh, to exchange views and for your determination and, and leadership. Thank you very much. We have Estonian public broadcasting. Uh, I'm uh, from uh, Russian news agency, Renosti. Sorry. Okay. Hi, Estonian Public Broadcasting, Johanna Stralla. Secretary General Rasmussen, a question to you first. Uh, Sergei Lavrov made a statement claiming that according to the Rome Declaration, no country has any rights to deploy additional troops or forces in Eastern Europe. Do you think uh, NATO plans are violating the Rome Declaration and is it still valid? No, of course. Uh we haven't violated uh, the Rome uh, Declaration, and I'm actually surprised uh, that Russia can claim uh, that NATO uh, has violated uh, its uh, commitments, um, because Russia uh, is uh, violating every principle uh, and international commitment it has made. Um, first and foremost, the commitment not to invade other countries um, uh, Russia has undermined um, the, all the principles of our relationship and therefore uh, there can no longer be uh, business uh, as, as usual. And to make it clear, uh, NATO's core task is to defend uh, our allies and this is what we are doing. Russian, our Russian colleague. Uh, Vladimir Dobrovolsky from uh, RIA Novosti. Uh, the question uh, also about the declaration of Foreign Minister Lavrov. Lavrov he said that uh, Russia sent, has had sent uh, concrete questions about NATO plans to boost military presence in the Eastern Europe. Did you receive such a request and will you answer it and how? Thank you. Um, NATO has uh, received uh, no such questions uh, from uh, Russia. Uh, frankly, uh, this is just another piece of uh, Russian uh, propaganda and uh, disinformation. Um, and uh, it, it's based uh, on a baseless interpretation uh, of the NATO-Russia uh, Founding Act, uh, which we agreed with Russia uh, in uh, 1997. Uh, in the Founding Act, uh, NATO promised uh, to uh, carry out our collective defense through reinforcement rather than uh, additional permanent stationing of substantial combat forces. And 
That's exactly what we are doing. Uh, in the same document, uh, Russia pledged to respect territorial integrity, sovereignty, and political independence of other states and refrain from the threat or use of force. And that's exactly what Russia is not doing. NPR and CBS. Hi, Terry Schultz with NPR and CBS. Um, to, just to clarify that, um, Foreign Minister Lavrov says we have addressed questions to NATO and we're expecting answers. Um, so if, I, if you could just clarify that you ha have, if I understood correctly, that you haven't received any questions. Um, and also, do I, uh, you, you, as you understand it, um, and you would understand it, um, the, you, don't, you are not restrained by any treaties or any pledges not to have a more permanent NATO presence in, in any uh, ally, and also to the Estonian Prime Minister. Um, you have mentioned boots on the ground. Ambassador Lepik has met mentioned boots on the ground. Would you need boots on the ground to feel safe, or do you believe that the alliance is doing enough now to reassure you after the measures uh, agreed upon by the foreign ministers? Thank you both. Um, first of all, let me stress uh, uh, what I answered is that I have not received uh, questions uh, from, uh, from Russia. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, these um, accusations um, are just uh, propaganda and uh, disinformation. Uh, um, and next, <clears throat> let me stress um, that uh, uh, we act uh, in accordance uh, with uh, our uh, documents um, and as I quoted from the, the document, uh, it's very clear that we will carry out our collective defense through reinforcement uh, when it's necessary. And that's exactly what we have done. We have uh, enhanced uh, air policing in the three Baltic states. We have deployed uh, AWACS aircraft to improve uh, surveillance. Uh, we have, you, you have seen more naval presence uh, in, in the Black Sea. Uh, and, and all these steps uh, are in full accordance uh, with the principles to which we have subscribed, uh, subscribed in the past. Well, the foreign ministers of NATO made an important step forward yesterday. But uh, it's a fact that uh, Estonia has no... Uh, NATO presence uh, on our soil, uh, with, of course, the exception of our own uh, uh, armed forces. And I think it's uh, very important that the Alliance has uh, decided that uh, NATO's military authorities will, uh, in near term, present a, sustain a sustainable uh, program uh, how to increase uh, NATO presence and to defend uh, all allies. Does that happen? Well, we will... Uh, go to specific details uh, in a later phase, but I, I personally believe that um, boots on the ground is a um, clear uh, presence uh, indicator. Thank you very much. Thank you.